Hi, I'm Ann Borg out of the Ward 5 City Councilor, and it's Ward 5 and 10. Today is Tuesday, June 11th. It rained like crazy this morning, and now it's gorgeous. Yes, one week from now, uh, people will be out of school, but some people have graduated. Congratulations, classes of 2019. All these incredibly remarkable people that graduated Broughton High, Cardinal Spellman, Southeastern Regional, Champion, um, and um, I'm sorry, that Keith, and um, also, oh, I'm sorry, the Edison Academy. There's so much great things going on in the city of Broughton, and we're prepared for a safe summer. But let's mention a couple of things. Yes, gang, we went through the budget but we have not made our cuts yet. If you want to reach a city councilor or address a concern or just get some questions answered, feel free to contact us. I can be reached at 774-297-4939 or a Beauregard, that's B-E-A-U-R-E-G-A-R-D at C-O-B-M-A dot U-S, okay? We are ready to help you. We don't always have the answers, but we'll look pretty hard to find them, let me tell you. We have summer solstice next Friday. Uh, if it's beautiful out, which we hope. There's so much to do next uh, Friday as every, the school vacation begins. On Friday, June 21st, it will be at Salisbury Park, right next to the Plouffe Academy. I forgot to say, it's free. All kinds of fun things for kids to do, games and whatever, snacks too. But what's most important is all you're going to find out for what's to do this summer so you're having fun and not getting in trouble. I know you plan on doing a lot of reading, and the library is already stocked up with your required reading. And in the past, we've had many champions, and we anticipate to have many more. Again, as I mentioned, graduations, Adult Learning Center, and again, the e English as a Second Language graduation ceremonies that took place throughout this city. There's many people learning how to speak English that have been lucky enough to come here. You see, I have a guest. I'm going to introduce her momentarily. And I want to remind people that if they want a mini job for two days during the year, uh, poll workers are needed. I believe you have to be 18, and that's about it. And um, you can uh, check in here, or you can call Cindy at 508-580-7117. Remember, we have two elections, the preliminary in September and the general election in November. So those are two days where you work quite a long day because the polls are open for 13 hours. But it's an opportunity to make some little holiday money or some special um, uh, spending money, as we'll call it. Um, there's free movies all summer long. I have one here that's actually for August 23rd. But, um, and that one's at the Keith Park, but DW Field Park Association is holding one on the 21st. So right after you have fun at summer solstice, you can go see How to Train Your Dragon, if I have that correctly, at DW Field Park. Again, free fun for everyone, free popcorn, the whole bit. Okay, and let's see here. We have the Summer Resource Guide. By the way, this is available at the libraries, parent information, um, and uh, let's see, in the schools. And it has so much great stuff that you can do throughout this summer, okay? Remember, this is June 11th. Summer starts for many of you on June 19th. We want it to be safe and fun for everyone. There's a lot of other stuff going on that I'll be able to point out. It's not going to be a quiet and simple summer, okay? I hope you're registered to vote, and I hope you're ready to get involved with a whole lot of activities that concern you or interest you and do a whole lot more. Uh, keeping up the community right now, they're still winding down with uh, planting the free trees, and you'll be able to order a tree if you wish to have one in the fall because they do a certain section, and then they'll come back. So again, I cannot emphasize to you enough, there's all sorts of questions, and yes, the number one for the residents, we're working on trying to do different things to get more funding into this city to get more streets paved. We hear you, we care about you, and we're trying, and this is quite a challenge because there's about a thousand miles of streets in this city, so you can imagine it's not uh, an overnight project. But there's a lot of other things that we hope will be able um, to uh, address your concerns. There's going to be meetings throughout the summer. You're always welcome to attend them, and you can see them on Broughton Community Access like now, and you can see them on YouTube too. Again, I'm Ian Beauregard, 
774-297-4939. And now you get to meet, oh, before we forget, remember our fair funding for our schools. We need to send our letters to uh, Speaker of the House DeLeo or call his office. A uh, letter is better because if they see them all piled up all over the desk, they know we mean business. More money for the schools in our city because our students deserve the best. We know they're already champions. If they're not winning awards at Drama Club, they're winning awards at track and field and all other sports. But again, let's uh, introduce Amelia Finney, and um, she's going to talk to you all about job opportunities and projects and everything else here. So welcome, Amelia, to Ward 5 and 10 Extended today. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's, uh, it's nice to get this opportunity to speak to people in the community. Um, I'm a business representative for the Carpenters Union, Local 346, uh, Southeastern Mass. Our office is right in Randolph, and you're probably familiar with our big building off the expressway in Boston <laughs> that has the big billboard. Uh, we all work together, even though we're separate locals. And I just wanted to come on and talk about the different opportunities available. We have an apprenticeship program. Um, so this gives people an opportunity to earn while they learn. Uh, it's a four-year program. You can come in not knowing carpentry at all, and at the end of four years, be uh, what we call a journeyman carpenter or journeywoman carpenter, um, right, like able that. to make the full union rate uh, and benefits that come along with it and all the free training uh, and opportunities. And I, I just want to really stress that this is an opportunity available to anyone who wants it, uh, including women, obviously. Um, you might not think of the, uh, women traditionally working in the trades, but it is an awesome opportunity for women uh, to get a chance to make a good living and, uh, and be part of the middle class. No, I think, I think this is great, and I think what we need to emphasize here is how old you have to be? You have to be uh, 18 years old. Okay. Uh, you need to have a GED or a high school diploma. Uh, there is a uh, Algebra 1 math test that you have to get a good score Ooh, on. Okay. Yep. So if, if it's been a little while since you've been in school, you might want to brush up on that, but it's so easy to go online and just brush up on those Algebra 1 math skills. You have to pass a substance test. Okay, well that's important, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right? It's important uh, that everybody be of the right mind when they're out there working in construction. Um, so, so that's a big one too. And um, that's it. So if you're interested, what you want to do is go to NECTF. That's New England Carpenters Training Fund. NECTF.org. And click on the tab that says Become an Apprentice. And there's lots of information there about the program so you can learn more. And what you'll see uh, if you click on the tab Become an Apprentice is the different info sessions that we have. And that's the first step to becoming a union carpenter's apprentice is going to one of those info sessions and learning all about the apprenticeship program and the union and how you get in. And that's where you'll get your application. And you've got 60 days to get that application back in with all your transcripts. Uh, and then you'll have an interview. So uh, these info sessions are held the first Monday of each month at 6 p.m. And that's great. Yeah. yeah. And in various locations, the closest one to here would probably be the, at our building in Boston that I talked about earlier on the expressway. Oh, great. Seven, 750 Dorchester Ave. So that, we also that. have a, a, a center out in Millbury. That's one of, where our, one of our big training centers is in Millbury, Mass. So people could drive out there as well. Yeah, that's off of 495. We're looking at, what, 45 minutes probably? From about Boston that, 45 area. to an hour. Yeah. Yep, right so, next to Worcester. Oh, yeah, so that, those are both manageable. I mean, carpenters' salaries start at what about now? So it depends. Um, there are different aspects of the trade sure. okay. um, and, and different rates. So there's a different rate for someone doing wood frame residential than there is for someone doing sheetrock and metal studs. Oh, wow. Um, so there's, okay. that's a commercial rate versus a residential rate. Uh, there are different rates for different parts of the state that you're working in. If you're working in Boston, the rate is, is more oh, than if you're working out here. But, you know, it's because the cost of living is more in Boston. <laughs> That's for sure. um, and there's, there's different things that people might not even realize um, that carpenters do. Um, you know, we have a local dedicated to the wood frame. We have locals dedica dedicated to the commercial work. And we also have a local dedicated to what's called pile driving which is like carpenters working out on the water. 
and they drive the big piles into the ground that buildings get built on to make get them stable. Out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Geez. So that's yeah. that's carpenters too. Yeah. Uh, and floor covers. Okay. Are their own local and have their own rate as well, and. Uh, cabinet shop doing uh making cabinets and working in a mill shop that's also a separate local separate rates and millwrights also who sort of the fine-tuned machinery uh, those are the millwrights wow so yeah there's, there's a whole lot that can we happen here and you're looking for a lot of people yeah construction's big right now there are a lot of opportunities uh, there's a lot going on if you look in the city right now i mean th there's cranes everywhere there's a ton of work coming on and then even the southeastern area, like in Brockton, I mean, there's there's a lot of schools getting built near near this area and bridges being rebuilt. So there's a lot of work. Oh, that's great. And the, and the thing is, too, there's people retiring, so that's even opening up more spots. Absolutely, yeah. There's, there's going to be a huge uh, number of people retiring. All the baby boomers are retiring. And, you know, the Gen X generation was like about half the size of the baby boomer generation. Sure. So that leaves a whole lot of opportunity for people, um, not just as carpenters, but even beyond that. And we have a program with Wentworth. I have some yes, information for that. you here. Yeah, that's great. Let me see so if you go through our apprenticeship program, you get credits towards a construction management degree from Wentworth, which is like one of the premier terrific is programs that? Yes. Yeah, um, to become a, a supervisor. And you can even go up to getting your master's in construction management from this program, and you get a discount on tuition. How impressive is that? And of course, that, that really opens up some more um, avenues. Uh, I, meant, I meant to ask you, how long about is the internship? The apprenticeship, apprenticeship is a four-year program. Four-year program. Okay, yeah. so you mentioned that, and you, you keep on going, but you're getting paid the whole time. You are, yeah. You. The whole time, everybody. <laughs> you know how huge that is? <laughs> That's right, and no student debt. And you yeah. end, which is, you know, uh, a big plus. Yes, a huge one, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's terrific. And that means that you can get started with working generally if you went, because technically we you said the first Monday of every month, then that means the next one's July 1st. Mm -hmm. Wow, because today is June 11th, July 1st, and then they'll be keep on going. So technically, you could go there July 1st and be kicked in the gear probably by August 1st if you had all your paperwork. Yeah. So, it, no, it's a little bit more of a process than that. Okay, it takes so a little while to get through the whole process and have an interview and then get your first job. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you've got to think about your future. It's something, it's an investment in your future because it's not just a job. It's a career. Oh, that I agree with. Yeah. So, technically, if you were working something over the summer and you go there in July, come August, you hear about an, an interview, maybe September you start getting going with something. And you could be saying goodbye to your minimum wage job and already be somewhere else. And uh, the situation being, I think what's really vital about all this is you get to look at what you made. Right. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of satisfaction in that. So much pride in that. When you're driving around and, you know, with your family or your <laughs> yeah. friends, and you're like, I built that. And uh -huh. I worked on that one. Um, yeah, you get a, a big sense of pride from that. Absolutely. There, there seems to be a lot of... Um, Emphasis, too, on safety, which that's encouraging, too, because that means that you're safer on the job, you're, you're making more money, there's job security, because not only is it a busy time in the history uh, economically of this it, region, right? there's also the fa fact mm -hmm. that while all this is happening, all these people who have been doing this for a long time are leaving the jobs because they're getting older and they're retiring and whatever. So, I mean, maybe it doesn't appeal to you, but you know someone that might really like this. And I imagine you're very uh, receptive to the veterans. Oh, absolutely. We have a program there called, you go. called Helmets to Hard Hats. So See? that when veterans come home, they're kind of on the top of the list to get into our program. This because is really important, yes. It absolutely is, because uh, veterans have already have so many of the skills that it takes to succeed in the construction industry. You know, getting up early, <laughs> right? Getting up early, gang. <laughs> Showing up and, and working hard for eight hours, and um, that's, that's half the battle right there. You have to be there. I, I believe it, and I, I know you have very good benefits, too, am I right? Oh, we have excellent benefits. And, that, and that's huge, too, because some companies are trying to cut corners here. So you could come at this at 32. 
You can come at this at 21 when you just got out of the service. Uh, you can come at this at 18 because you weren't sure what you wanted to do. And if you go through this program and you get this deal with Wentworth and you decide, okay, maybe I want more office or maybe I want more. I mean, you have just opened up a, a new universe. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I see some other good stuff here. And what, and what is this? Yeah, here? so yeah. I wanted to also talk about this. This is oh, please. Yeah. Build a Life That Works is a campaign for women to okay. get more women into trades unions. It's not just the carpenters, it's in collaboration with all unions. There's a big push to get more women in, uh, which or I think is harder workers. No, just great. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But no, this, this, this it makes a difference too in the whole aspect of it. I was affiliated decades ago with women in the building trades with it. Oh, yes. wow. Yes. Excellent. So well, was, this is uh, sort of... Um, this, this program, what's really great about this, so you can visit this online at buildalifema.org. And if you don't know much about what different trades unions do what, they have all kinds of, they have bios from all different women that have worked in different trades unions and about their lives and what they love about it and what's challenging about it. And it also shows you, you can click on these little links, like you, it might be a, a little icon of a hammer, and that'll tell you what the carpenters union does. And you might click on a little icon of a wrench and it'll tell you about the plumbers union and the iron workers and so on and so forth, the electricians. And there's just so much opportunity available right now to everyone, including women. So how great is that? And you could still be a carpenter and have a great job and just say, oh, maybe I'm going to take a college class here or there. I mean, I know people in the building trades have been very satisfied and retire, retire quite nicely, comfortably. And on top of that, they've had good benefits all along, which is huge Absolutely. because less co-pays, different things of that nature, which can, can hit you pretty hard sometimes. And a, an example being on top of all this is that there's other avenues to take different classes because this continues to expand and the technology changes so you Absolutely. can learn more. And it's just an enormous sense of pride too. And um, I, just, I just think, and I, I just got to commend you for two really important things. Not only does uh, this, you know, vital and this, you know, opportunity for further education, continuous education, because y y it's lifelong learning. The opportunity for women, I mean, I know, because I knew women that did this, and they were breaking ground in the 70s and 80s, and we were celebrating this when they were 20, you know, years in the industry in the, in the 90s, and that was huge. And now, you know, you see the woman, you go, yeah. And, but this, this can help provide for your families, and there's more regular hours. And that's huge, too. And, you know, when you're raising a family, on, or, you know, you're taking care of elder parents or something. The other part, too, is this um, helmets to hard hats. I mean, our veterans deserve everything possible. And, and the idea of knowing that they can come back and be treated with respect and have an opportunity at a career after all the sacrifice they made for us, I mean, that that's just, you know, just a, a demonstration of how great this whole situation, you know, condition is. And I'm just grateful that you came today. Thank and, you so uh, much. Amelia is always in the community. You're going to see her popping up everywhere. Maybe she'll come to Summer Solstice, or maybe she'll um, show up at Cape Verde Festival. Like I said, we have a lot of festivals going on this summer. We're supposed to have a music fest at Massasoit. I mean, it is limitless, all the fun times that we're going to have with um, free or minimal cost um, events throughout the city and Amelia is available and she's going to just tell us how you can get a hold of all this and um, we're going to thank her for being here and she's going to be back and you might just see her popping up on other programs too because the more people can know about the good things that are happening especially things that happen that can improve your family and your future you know it's all just makes Broughton a better place to live so again Amelia thank you and I'm gonna let you reiterate um, all the, the the vital information you gave us here yeah so really all this information will be available to you on our website nercc.org that's NERC <laughs> like that NERC with two C's <laughs> dot org uh, and that stands for New England Regional Council of Carpenters and there's lots of information there and there's links to all these different programs that we talked about 
And I really appreciate the, uh, being able to come on and talk to uh, people on your show. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. I'm honored to have you. And everyone re needs to realize, too, that you can come with you know, your languages. And that's welcome, too, because there's so many people working with international businesses now throughout this region. Because we're in a very eclectic area of... Uh, the um, Massachusetts and pretty much New England, as, as we say, with Boston, you know, that we used to say, the hub of the universe. Maybe yes, maybe no, but um, we're Broughton, and you could be working in Boston, or you could end up in Plymouth, or in Millbury, or in Barnstable, or, and, and, and oh my God, you could end up on Martha's Vineyard. You see them sometimes coming off the ferry. We do, <laughs> we do quite a bit of work out there. Yes, we do. Kind of neat. Yes. So look at this, and you get just get around. You get some, you know, classes out of it, a, a degree, and you start learning and working and making money all at once. So again, I, I mean, what, what a way to, you know, kick off summer and think about, you know, some of you that left school and weren't sure what to do, or some of you that got laid off or things changed, you know, this, this is an opportunity for you. And I, again, I, can't, I want to thank Emily, Amelia, I'm sorry. And I want to thank everyone for being here. And I always Professor Tebow for having all the patience with me as he tapes this. This is about my 40th um, Ward 5 in um, 10. And of course, this was an extended one. And again, people, summer solstice, February 21st, starts at 4 p.m. Uh, right next to uh, the Plouffe Academy at the Salisbury Park. This program, Summer Resource Guide, don't tell me there isn't anything to do in this city when you have a book this fat and uh, you wouldn't believe how many things are free. Um, there's going to be a lot of information coming out about different things in this city, whether they have to do with zoning, license commission, different buildings that are going to come up or go down. And again, uh, we try our best to get, connect up with you. And I'm at Ann A. Beauregard at cobma.us or 774-297-4939. Thank you again. And we'll uh, see you in July.